Hey guys, welcome to another video tutorial where I am going to show you how to make this lovely bobble sweater. It is actually called Bits and Bobbles. I had a fun Instagram challenge where I asked you guys to kind of help me name this new design. And one of you creative geniuses chose Bits and Bobbles, which I thought was just perfect. And so today's video, I'm going to walk you through step by step exactly what you need to do in order to make one of these sweaters. It's going to be available in children's sizes all the way up to 5X. It's kind of a crop style, but I'm going to explain how you can make it longer or shorter or whatever you want um, to fit your exact style needs. And so a few things, obviously, I have an end I need to weave in. Uh, the sleeves are about three quarter. We have kind of a fun funnel neck right here. And then if I scoot you back just a little bit and kind of tilt you down, you can see it's got a fun crop and I've just layered it over one of my t-shirts. So very roomy, very comfortable, great for hiding those spots you want to hide or if you want to size down or make it a little shorter. Um, you can do whatever you want. Uh, that's the great thing about it. So I really hope you love today's tutorial. I hope that you love making a bits and bobbles sweater for yourself or for your grandchild or your child or whatever, whoever you want to make it for. Thank you again for liking and subscribing. I have hit 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube and I'm going to be having an amazing giveaway. So make sure you yourself are subscribed and have post notifications turned on so you can find out all the details of the giveaway and how to enter and all of that good stuff. So without further ado, grab your supplies. It's listed right here and let's get started making the bits and bobble sweater. All right, so we are gonna dive right in with today's tutorial and I'm gonna put a timestamp at the bottom for you to skip ahead to um, where I show you exactly how to do the pattern itself. Um, but for right now, what I'm going to do is just explain a little bit of the construction of the garment. So we're once again going to have four total panels. So we'll have identical front and back pieces, identical sleeves, and then we'll have a very small little collar to create that funnel or tunnel looking neck to the garment. So here is kind of my rough sketch of the sweater. So you start down at the bottom with this ribbing and then we work up to the top and you do this for the front and the back. The sleeve is the same way. We start at the ribbing and we go up. Now the thing about this particular garment is that there is no sizing, um, I'm sorry, no shaping, which basically means that there's no um, increasing or decreasing in the pattern. It's very simple and easy to adjust for specific body types and all of that sort of thing. So there is a two inch positive ease, which basically means I've taken the bust measurement as the widest part of the body and I have added two additional inches to give some space. So yarn naturally has a stretch to it. Some yarns stretch more than others. Cottons don't have a lot of give, but acrylics, most of them at least, um, do have a decent stretch to them. And so you have the natural stretch of the yarn uh, with the regular bust measurement, and then you're gonna add two inches. But I've already figured all that out for you with all of the different sizes that I've done. So essentially what I'm gonna do is up here, I already have uh, both front and back panels done of the child's version, and I have a sleeve done. And so this is it pulled out. This is just a sleeve and it's about a three quarter inch sleeve. So it comes down to about the mid forearm. Um, and obviously um, it's smaller because it's a child size. And so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna explain to you how to do this ribbing part and then how to actually work up the stitch section so that you can have confidence as you work all of these. And like I said just a second ago, the sleeves and both the front and back panels are the same identical stitch pattern, which is this bobble stitch, as you can see right here. Um, and this ribbing right here, which is exactly what will be the neck, uh, is this ribbing. It's the same exact height. And you would just make a neck the size uh, said in the pattern, which is linked down below directly to Ravelry. So um, just to give you a visual, this is gonna be worked in little sections and we work it this way and then when we're done we turn like this and we'll begin working this stitch repeat right here so make sure that you have all of your materials make sure you have the pattern so that you can follow along with the exact number that you're supposed to do and we will get started okay so we're going to take our six millimeter crochet hook 
and whatever worsted weight yarn you desire. This is just, um, let me show you the sleeve of it so you can know exactly what it is. This is just Red Heart with Love. I like this yarn. Um, it's a little softer and has a really nice texture. And for a child's size, you actually only need about one skein and a fourth of this yarn. So it winds up being very cost effective, which is what I like. So go ahead and make yourself a slip knot. And then we will begin by chaining six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. In the second chain from the hook, so one, two, we're gonna place a single crochet. And let me adjust that lighting just a little bit. We're gonna place a single crochet. And then you're gonna single crochet in each stitch across. And you're gonna chain one and turn. Now, if you have been around for any amount of time, you know how much I love <laughs> doing that faux ribbing. So if we're looking right here, you can see the kind of V. So normally if you're going into a stitch, you're gonna go under both of those like that. But we aren't gonna do that because we want a faux ribbing stitch. So this would be considered the front loop and this here is the back loop. So we wanna go into the back loop and work a single crochet and just continue doing that all the way across. So we have we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna chain one and turn. And we're just gonna do the same exact thing. That chain one counts as a single crochet. So we're just gonna single crochet into the back loop of the other five stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And now this is the chain one section. So you're just gonna push into that chain one chain one and turn and then do it again the chain one counts as a single crochet so start in the next stitch into the back loop and you're gonna do this for the bottom cuff and you're gonna do this for the neck ribbing as well and it's the same exact process for creating this ribbing on the sleeves on the body panels and on the neck cuff as well so do this for as many as your pattern says, and then come back and I'll show you how to transition into the bobble section. So once you have as many as the pattern calls for, for the size that you're making, you're gonna turn your band from working this way to working this way. And basically you're gonna need as many double crochets as there are bands, um, or I'm sorry, like little ridges. So for this, I did a total of 32 here, and so that means I'm going to need to do 32 double crochet. So we're going to turn this, we're going to chain two, and this chain two is going to count as a double crochet. And then basically what we're going to do is if we look right here, we kind of have these little, like a popped out section, and then a pushed in section, and then a popped out section. So we're just going to insert our hook right there in that space and then just kind of go in the next little section and then the next little section and there's not really stitches here but if you kind of look you can see there's a natural space for those stitches to go 
that line up with the ridges. And so if I stop for a second, you can kind of see how they all somewhat line up with that ribbing. And if we look on this finished one, you can see that it lines up rather well with that. So the goal is to just mainly be sure that you're not spacing them too far apart and that you're kind of just putting them into natural formation with the ribbing section, especially since you're doing an equal number of double crochets to the ribbing, if that makes sense. So just continue doing this all the way across your ribbing until you have the exact number of double crochet that you do of the ribbing. All right, so now that we've made it to the end, we're gonna chain one and turn. And this is what's gonna start our little bobble section. So we have chain one counts as a single crochet. Then we're gonna single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, and then we're gonna do a bobble in the next stitch. So this is how the bobble has worked. Yarn over, insert your hook, draw up a loop the height of a double crochet, yarn over, pull through two. Now leave those on the hook. We're gonna yarn over again, go into the same exact space, yarn over, draw up a hook, uh, a loop to the size of the others, pull through two. Now we've got three loops on our hook. Do it again, yarn over, insert your hook into the same space, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. We've got four now. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same space, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So now we have a total of one, two, three, four, five. So our bobble is done. We're gonna yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and then chain one to tie it off. Then we're just gonna work seven single crochets into the next seven stitches. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're gonna work another bobble. Yarn over, just like you're working a double crochet, but just don't finish it. Work another one and then another one, and then one more for a total of five loops on your hook. So one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, pull through all three, chain one, and then do seven more single crochet. And here's another bobble. I'm gonna do it a little slow so you can see. five on the hook, pull through all five, chain one, and then seven more. Another bobble right here. five, pull through all five, chain one, and then one, two, three, four, you have four single crochet to finish off the row. You're gonna chain one and turn. Now, 
This is something that's very important and you have to make sure that you do this. Otherwise, it could mess up the whole thing for you. So our chain one counts as a single crochet. We single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet right up to the bobble. If you look at this bobble, you see kind of a tighter V and then more of an elongated V. This V we're going to skip. This is the V that we did right at the end of the bobble to kind of secure it and help it pop out a little bit. So we skip over that. If you were to work a single crochet into that stitch, you're going to increase, which is not what we want. So anytime you're working a wrong side row over the bobble, you always skip the tight V and instead work a single crochet into the elongated V so that you don't wind up having um, an extra stitch. So you just basically single crochet. You don't even have to count. You just need to be careful as we're coming up to the bobble. Okay, so we're looking. There's two V's right there on top of the bobble. So we single crochet right up to the bobble. Then we look at the top of the bobble and we've got the tighter V and the more elongated. Skip that tight one, go straight into the elongated V and then you're good to go. So if you are cruising along and maybe you're just not paying attention and you all of a sudden realize that you aren't creating a rectangle anymore, you've got kind of like this weird upside down triangle. It might just be that you worked a stitch into that uh, tight V rather than the elongated one and that is what has caused the mess up. So just be really, really careful not to go into the wrong spot because otherwise it's going to mess up your count and it's going to be frustrating and that's definitely not what we want. So the top of the bobble, there's the tight one. Here's the elongated one. And if you see the elongated, you see how that one's kind of tight. And then this one goes from there to there. It's longer. That's the one you want to work into on top of the bobble. Just make sure that you don't forget to do a single crochet into that chain space at the end. We're going to chain two now. And we're going to, <coughs> excuse me, double crochet in each stitch all the way across. And this chain two counts as a double crochet. And all you do is work double crochets into each stitch all the way across. Really simple. All right, so once you put the last stitch in, you're going to chain one, turn, and then single crochet all the way across. And remember, your chain one does count as a single crochet. So single crochet in each stitch all the way across, and I'll meet you at the end and show you how to do the next bobble row. All right, so now that we're at the end of the row, we're just going to chain one. And as you can see, we have a bobble here. And obviously the goal is to create the bobbles in the windows. So we chain one and that counts as one. And we're going to single crochet for two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in the next one, we're going to do another bobble. So again, it's just that almost a double crochet and you're going to do that for a total of four times to give us five loops total on our hook. Pull all the way through, chain one, and then seven more single crochet.
do another bobble. Pull through all five of the loops, chain one, seven more single crochet. Another bobble. And then you will end on eight. You'll do eight single crochet after that. So you can see it is already looking really good. So our next row, um, this is basically the repeat. So once you do your foundation um, double crochet, you do the bobble, then it's single crochet, double crochet, and then single crochet, then your bobble, then single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, bobble and just follow your instructions in your pattern that you get from Ravelry and do that until you have two identical body panels and two identical um, sleeve panels. So once you have all of that and you make your little ribbing for your neck hole, pop back into the video and I'm gonna show you how to seam it all together. Okay, so I've completed both of my sleeves and both of the body panels and this is the neck collar and I just wanted to show you how to attach the ends in case you weren't sure how to do that. You're just going to take both of the ends and you're going to go under the stitches and you're just going to single crochet those together and you're just going to do that all the way across just making sure to line everything up so that it is even and none of the stitches are pulling. And you're gonna make this tube and the next part of the video I'm going to be teaching you how to seam everything together so that the sweater fits nice and good. So once you've single crocheted that, you're going to take your scissors and you're going to just tie that off. And so now we've got the neck piece, we've got both of the sleeve pieces, and we've got both of the body pieces. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you how to seam everything together. So once you've got all of your four panels made and your neck piece, pop back into the video and I'm going to show you how to connect everything. Okay, so when we're getting started, we have the right sides of our panels, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to take both of these panels and we're going to lay them with the right sides out, and then we're simply going to seam these together. Okay, here's the end. Let me try to back this up just for a second so you can kind of see my space isn't super big. So you've got this and you have to remember, you've got to leave a neck hole space. And here is our little ribbing for our neck hole. And so obviously it's got to be at least that big. And let me, one second while I adjust this. Okay, so it's got to be at least this big. So if we lay this down, we can kind of center it. We know that if we go right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 stitches right here from this side to this side, we're going to uh, single crochet together. So I'm going to do that really quick. We're going to seam those together. And I'm just going to use a single crochet stitch to seam these together. Really, really simple. So 
So you just make a normal slip knot. And then you just make sure that your rows are lined up. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and 15. So that's 15. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. My laundry's done. We're going to go ahead and cut that and then I'm going to hold this up for you just so you can see. So as you can see, all I did was just single crochet this shoulder seam. And so then what you're going to do is you'll lay your thing back down in your space and then you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. 15 single crochet, crochet stitches across to close up the shoulder seam. And now you can see that we've got both of the shoulders seamed. So I'm gonna switch positions really quick and I'm gonna show you how to attach the collar on the inside. Okay, so what we have here is the body of the sweater. So when you take your little neck part, you see how the seam that we made is kind of bulbous a little bit. So what we're essentially gonna do is we're going to flip that where it's kind of hidden, and that would be like the right side. And then we're gonna slip it right into the spot of the neck area. Let me turn it down just a little bit more so you can see. So we've just basically kind of inserted it into this neck hole. Now we left these long little tail thingies and we're gonna use those to our advantage. Basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of feed them right here and we're going to use that to kind of lock that corner because again we want it to all line up sorry my dryer keeps going off um, we're going to use that to line up both of the sides that's one reason why I like to keep them kind of long especially if I have a neck on something so we're just going to go like that and those are just kind of holding that thing in place as we work our way around and then all you're going to do is you're just going to, you see how you've got your stitches here? You're just gonna simply put your hook right into one of those spaces and then straight into your collar. And then you're gonna take your yarn, whatever yarn you're using, and all you're gonna do is just single crochet that little collar on. And you'll just go, <coughs> excuse me, all the way around just trying to make sure that things are nice and lined up, that you're not pulling too tight or anything like that. Check it every now and then. Kind of use that corner as your guide, right? You don't want it to be too bunched up. <coughs> Excuse me. Or anything like that. So just kind of go slow and just make sure that things are laying properly and you don't have too much space or anything like that and you should do 
totally fine as you single crochet this around. And it's real simple, it's just a single crochet. I'm trying to pull my yarn here. Really simple. Ah. You just single crochet, like I said, all the way around. And you don't have to untie the corners, just single crochet right over those ties. It'll just help secure it a little bit more. And then of course we'll go back and make sure that everything's all sewn in. So here you are at your corner. You just wanna kinda make sure you single crochet all that together. And this is really forgiving. So we're gonna go ahead and flip our sweater because we're already on the other side. And this is the same process whether you're making a size 2T or if you're making a, um, a 5X for an adult. It, it's the same exact thing. Everything's just gonna be a little bit bigger. You would just um, kind of measure your neck hole and make sure it's centered with both body pieces and then make sure that you single crochet um, an even number of shoulder seam. And again, just kind of test it and make sure everything's laying right. So once you've got that all done, obviously we haven't woven in our ends yet, but you can kind of see what the little collar looks like. And so that kind of gives you an idea. It just nicely fits in there and it just looks seamless and all that stuff. All right, so at this point we're ready to attach the sleeves. So basically what I've done here is I've taken our sleeve, I folded it in half and I used the little long strings that we had to kind of tie it on into the middle and the middle right here is our shoulder seam so you just want to kind of lay everything flat and we're going to do exactly what we did with the single crochet row we're going to do that here working along and attaching the sleeve on now the key with sleeve attachment is mainly this you don't want to stretch it too far you don't want it to be too scrunched up you just want to make sure everything is relaxed and that the center of your sleeve is matched up with the center seam. And it's just like we've done before. All we're going to do is put on our slip knot and we're just simply going to, oh, hold on, I've got my tail in there. We're just simply going to work it like normal. So you just put your hook in, just kind of come straight across and work those single crochets just like this. And as I told you with the shoulder, the main thing is you've got this tied. So you just want to kind of keep checking and making sure that you don't have any bunching or that um, it's not too stretched out or anything like that. Just kind of stop, do a couple, stop, make sure everything is, excuse me, still lining up. That way it's all even and nothing is pulled too tight and nothing is too loose. You just want to make sure that everything is as even as possible.
So right here, we're coming up to the middle knot and we just wanna make sure that everything is secure. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that knot and then when we get ready to um, sew in our ends, we'll just sew them in right there. And it's just an added securing thing. So you don't have to worry about undoing any of that because it's fine if you leave it. You just continue working across. And just trying to make sure that you're not too tight or anything like that. Just go slowly. Um, you might wonder why I use the single crochet row. One of the main reasons is I feel like it gives more control to the seam. Sometimes whenever you are stitching it with an embroidery needle, you'll find that stitches will gather or they'll be too tight. And in my opinion, the single crochet row just it's more secure, like I said, and it offers um, more evenness when it comes to seaming the stitches. So now that we have done one of these, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other sleeve, and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to fold it closed and seam up the sides, like under the arm and everything. Okay, so now that we've got everything seamed together, we've still basically got this um, inside out a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the sweater and we're going to line everything up okay so we've got the cuffs of the sleeves we've got the underarm area right here and we're gonna leave these long because we're gonna use those and then we've got this bottom cuff right here so here's what I like to do in the underarm area we're gonna take these long strings and we're gonna tie these together and this is going to kind of help us be able to gauge um, exactly where everything needs to line up. Because the thing about keeping this tied is you're going to seam from here into the underarm. And this is kind of the area where we can scrunch things together if stuff got misaligned as we were seaming. And then you're going to seam from the bottom up to the underarm. And again, it's for the purpose of if we wind up with extra stitches or things aren't looking even, we can kind of hide it right here in the underarm. It's the same exact tactic you would use if you were actually sewing a piece with fabric versus yarn. Um, so you're gonna do exactly what you did as far as seaming with the sleeve and with the shoulders. You're just gonna start at the cuff. You're gonna make sure things are perfectly aligned and you're gonna work into the arm and I recommend coming down a little bit. Then once you're done there, tie off and then come down here and line up your bottom and work up to the underarm and kind of come over these stitches just a bit to, for extra security. Do that on both sides and then come back. We'll flip it inside out and we'll look at what it looks like. Once you're done weaving in all your ends, you will have this, and I'm gonna take my camera out real quick so you can kind of see, but you'll have this awesome sweater. Perfect for mom granddaughter, daughter, customer, whoever your clientele is. So I hope you guys like it. I really hope that this video was helpful for you. I hope that you enjoy making a bits and bobbles sweater. I had so much fun designing it and it was really a pleasure to come up with something fun and creative and kind of unique in texture and all of that good stuff. Um, I have more fun videos coming this week. I have an awesome home sweet home cardigan that I am making with my favorite yarn, Lion Brand Jeans. You'll definitely want to um, check that out. So be sure you're subscribed, like this video, share it with other maker friends who you think would enjoy making a bits and bobbles sweater. And I will see you guys in the next one.